may we encounter the presence of the Lord. May we encounter God's word. May we pour into the, the next generation. And uh, I wanted to share this with you guys. It's a powerful uh, picture. And so look at this. Oh, <laughs> hold on real quick. There we go. I don't know why I did that. Look at that. Pouring into the next generation. That's uh, me praying for my uh, my son Nathan. He is uh, seven years old. Just look at this. Look how powerful uh, this is. And my wife just took a picture. We were uh, we were praying and pouring into the next generation. Pouring into into my family, and uh, so powerful uh, <clears throat> to. To get that from my wife, she's like, "Look, I I, said, I got a picture of you praying over over Nathan, and I just uh, blessed my heart so much. I was like, wow, I love it. <clears throat> good morning, Selma. Good to have you on. I was I was surprised to get a text. I was like, Selma, why are you up so early? <laughs> At least you know I'm up. Uh, Yolanda, Buenos dias. Good morning, Helen. Good morning, uh, Smokey. Good morning, everybody that is tuning in live. Irma Estevez, God bless you. Good to have you. Right, Salma? <laughs> Salma was like, hey, it's 5 o'clock. Where are you? I said, uh, getting my tea ready. Got a little tea. It says, bless is a man of faith. It's backwards, but... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but uh, as I was uh, sharing about, about Nathan... Uh, my my wife and Nathan were having a conversation. This was maybe, I think it was two days ago, or it wasn't yesterday, but it was uh, uh, two days ago. My my wife asked Nathan, Nathan, when you get married, are you you gonna bring? Uh, are you guys gonna come visit Mama, Mommy? <laughs> That's what she said. Are you gonna go come visit Mommy? And then uh, so he told her. He's like, I don't know if I'm gonna get married. And she's like, What do you mean? She's like, And he said that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get married because Jesus is coming back. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. He's like, prophet to the nation. So Nathan, uh, if you look at the story of Nathan, he was a prophet uh, in the times of David. And so he was, uh, uh, so we named him, uh, named him Nathan. And so Nathan's a prophet in the Bible. And so I was like, Lord, I said, you're, you're speaking because even to him, He's been, he's seven years old and seen everything that's happening. And we try to uh, keep, we don't, we don't watch the, the news and stuff, but it's kind of crazy just uh, having a little seven year old say that. It's like, I don't know if I'll get married, mama, because Jesus is coming back soon. And so that's a little prophet to the nations, uh, prophet, and then just pouring into him. And it was just so beautiful to capturing that picture of, uh, of me praying for, for my son, uh, Nathan, and praying for the next generation, praying for family. And that's what we have to do. It's like our heart, uh, what, what the Lord told me uh, in this. It, good morning, Bethel and Julie. Good to have you guys on. What the Lord told me in this is that we, as we are studying the word, is like allow the word of God to teach you so you can teach others. Allow the word of God to penetrate your heart and to change you, to transform you. That way you can be a blessing to others and you can explain, uh, you can you can tell them what God has spoken to you. And that's what we're doing here on the morning devotional. I'm just I'm just uh, sharing my morning devotional uh, with you guys and uh, just sharing what God has spoken to me. And so I pray that you would be touched by this. I pray that uh, the Lord will give you insight. I pray that the, that the Lord will give us um, uh, just an encounter with the Lord. And in today's message, if you want to name it, is what has your attention? What has your attention? And what, what has your attention and what has God's attention? And so we're going to be reading Exodus. We are in Exodus. Good morning, Josefina. Good to have you on. Good morning, Jay. God bless you. Good to have you on. Good morning, Tyson Sr., Nundu. All the way from, I think it's an island near Madagascar, I believe. And so people from around the world are listening and tuning in. So good to have you guys. You've been uh, she's been faithful. Nundu has been faithful uh, watching. And so good to have you on all the way from L.A. to the outermost parts of the world. Good to have you. 
Good to have you. Good to have you. So we, we are journeying through the one year Bible. Many people have gotten their one year Bible. They're like, I want one. I want because it's, it's so practical and uh, good to have you, Cindy Davis. And so today we're going to be reading Exodus chapter two and then uh, chapter three, verse 22. And then we're going to be reading uh, Matthew chapter 17, 10 through 27. And so we're going to be reading Psalms 22, 1 through 18. Oh, so powerful. That that one is amazing. Good morning, Crystal Powell. Good to have you. Buenos dias. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, and then we're going to be reading Proverbs chapter 5, verse 7 through 14. And so let's get into Exodus, 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 the exit. <laughs> And so uh, let's go into chapter three. It says, uh, it says, one day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. Mar Maritias, Maritias, Mar I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Nundu. <laughs> Maritias, well, good to have you. And I know that you're, I know that uh, God is doing something amazing in your life too. So praise God. Uh, so in, in chapter three, let's read it again. The priests of Midian, he led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire in the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. I could imagine it just, I just, it came to, when I was reading this, it came to my mind, like, he was just like, what's going on right here? <laughs> and so, the, it says, Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. And we see right here, Moses was being curious. He was like, he was in amazement. He was in the, the, the wonder. He was in like, I wonder why this is happening. <laughs> I wonder what's going on. And so he's like, let me go a little bit closer. And, and we see right here, this is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't the bush burning up? I must go see it. And then when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, so in the other um, versions, other um, uh, translations, it says God saw, God noticed that Moses that he caught Moses' attention. So he got Moses' attention. So when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am. Moses replied. Don't come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals. You are standing on holy ground. I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then verse 7, Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of, of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the powers of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pe uh, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. Now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, who am I to, to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? And then uh, I love this portion right here because Anna have, have put a, she put a, a comment. I don't feel capable, but God is calling me. Woo! That's powerful. I don't feel capable, 
but God is calling me. Wow. God answered, I will be with you, and this will be the sign I am with I am with you, who is the one, the one that sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship the God at this very mountain. But Moses protested. He's like, God, you got my attention no more. Yeah, how, how can I go, Lord? But Moses protested. If I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors had sent me to you, they would ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell him? Tell them. Uh, God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am who I am sent you. God also said, Moses, say this to the people of Israel. Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. <laughs> we see God calls him calls himself I am and then he says I am the God of Abraham Isaac and Israel <laughs> this is my eternal name to remember for all generations now go I, I call together all the elders of the church and uh and tell them Yahweh the God of your ancestors the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob has appeared to me and told me I have been watching closely and I've seen how the Egyptians are treating you I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land flow of milk and honey in the land where the Canaanite, Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites now live. And we see what caught Moses' attention and then we see what has caught God's attention. And so God used Signs and wonders. God used this burning bush illustration for Moses because that's what caught Moses' curiosity. That's what caused Moses to pay attention. He's like, why is this going on? Why is this happening? There's something different about going into the mountain of God. There's something different about going to this place because I'm, I'm seeing something that is like beyond like, wow, this is crazy. And so God with the people, he uses miracles, signs, and wonders to, to share with the people. And we see that it caught Moses' attention. But as we read before, Moses had a heart for the people. He saw the oppression. And we see that in the, the earlier portions uh, in chapter 1 and 2, we see that Mos Moses, he saw one of the Egyptians uh, uh, really oppressing one of the uh, Israelites or the Hebrew slaves. And then so Moses ends, ends up killing the Egyptian. And he thought nobody was paying attention. And I love the commentary that Tom Dooley said. He says a lot of times, and this is kind of going off, off the track where I'm going, but he said a lot of times we look around and see, is, this, is, it, is, is it safe? Is it safe? Is it, nobody looking. Nobody looking. Is nobody looking? Is nobody here? We have that, or do we say, "I don't do it because it's not the right thing to do"? And I was just like, "Wow, Lord, that was that was powerful." Come on, Tom Dooley, preach it. And so, if you want to hear the audio, um, I put it up on the top of the link um, out of the One Year Bible, so you can actually click on the link and you can hear the the One Year Bible. Uh, Tom Dooley gives a brief audio, and then he gives you the whole reading of today so you can follow along. And it, it, it's almost like word for word, except with a couple of words that are kind of like, <clears throat> kind of different, but word for word of what we're reading today in, uh, in, Gen in uh, January tw uh, 26th. But anyways, um, so he was talking about that, but then now going into this, uh, where, I, where the Lord led me, is that what has caught our attention because what has caught Moses' attention is this miraculous sign. What caught Moses' attention was seeing this. He's like, how can this be? And so it, it causes uh, curiosity with, uh, with Moses and to lead him closer to the, to the, Lord, uh, to the Lord. Good morning, Grandma Lola. Good to have you on. Uh, and let him closer to the Lord. But as I was reading this, I saw what caught Moses' attention. And then I saw what caught God's attention. And what caught God's attention was this. In verse 7, the Lord told him, told Moses, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people. 
I have heard their cries of distress because of the harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their suffering. So I come, I can't have come down to rescue them from the powers of the Egyptians and led them out of Egypt into the land, to their own land, to their spacious land. Is the land flowing with milk and honey. And so what caught God's attention was the crying out of his people. Crying out. They were crying out in distress. And I know that in this season, in this season that we are in, there's a cry in Egypt. There's a cry in the land. There's a cry of what's going on. There's a cry. There's like, God, there, there's there's many things that are happening. This is happening. That is happening. This is what's going on. This is what's going on in the world. And the cries of the people of the people are going up and it's raising up to heaven. It's raising up. So as we cry out, I pray that this will get the Lord's attention in the name of Jesus, that we will cry out, that we will cry out Maranatha, that we will cry out, God, come quickly, that we will cry out, Lord, have your way. If my people will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. God, may you heal our land. May you heal us for the sake of of the righteous living here in the land. May God hear our prayers. May God hear our cries. May God hear you, you crying out, Bethel and Julie, as you're crying out to the Lord. Say, God, come quickly. God, have your way. God, I must humble myself so that you can increase. Let me decrease so that you can increase. God, hear our prayers from heaven. And may the Lord hear our prayers. This is a powerful message, guys. May we cry out to the Lord in such a way that we grab his attention. And may he grab our attention by, by, by doing what he does best. He's a miracle worker, promise keeper. He's light in the darkness. He is true to his word. And he's a deliverer. He's a savior. He's a healer. He is just. He is holy. He is righteous. He is powerful. He is omnipresent. He is all-knowing. He knows, and he is the suffering Messiah. He suffered a life here on earth so that we can know him. We're, we are like Moses. I pray that we, are, we will be like Moses. We will be so like, the Lord has my attention. And I pray, I pray that no other distractions will get your attention. No other distractions will get my attention. But as I read the word, I was like, oh, what is this? What does this mean? What is that? And then God, God leads you and God, God shows us and God gives us insight and God gives us revelation. It's like, wow, Lord, I didn't see that before. And we see this in this portion of scripture. It's like God got Moses' attention because the people of the Lord got God's attention. And you see how God is just putting everything together. Could you imagine if, uh, if Moses, he would have said, oh, look at that burning bush. Oh, but then I got to tend to my flock. I got to tend to this. No, no, he just, he's like, let me, I want to go, I want to go deeper. I want to know, I want to know what's happening. I want to know what's going on. I want to draw closer. Why, why is this happening before my eyes? And I pray that the power of God would do that in your life today. As you are hearing this message, those who are tuning in live, those who are tuning in on the replay, if this, has, if there, if this video has captured your attention, I pray that it's the Lord that is capturing your attention. You may, you may be scrolling, you may be like looking, you're like, this brother is coming on every day, Monday through Friday, at dark clock in the morning. What does he have to say? What does he have to say? And as you're scrolling, you start kind of listening a little bit. It's like, okay, what? I'm, it's not making sense. This is what's happening. But I pray that in that, I pray that God will speak to you in a powerful way. I pray that God will grab your attention because we see that God has grabbed our attention. We see that he allowed this pandemic. He allowed what's going on. And he has got, he has got our attention. And the Lord has our The Lord has my attention. The Lord has my attention. That's why I believe that God has me in the name of Jesus. Yes, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, wars, violence, disease, and, and, and viruses. 
the Lord is at the threshing, at the at the door, at the threshing door. The Lord, you see that what Mike, what uh, what Tyson Senior have put so powerful. We see we see what's going on, and I pray that the as these stuff is happening, what is written in the scriptures coming to life, coming to manifestation, coming out and seeing all of this stuff is happening. It's not by coincidence, guys. It's not by coincidence that a little seven-year-old will say, Jesus is coming soon. It's not by coincidence by reading what the scriptures say and seeing what's going on in the world. And we know that his, his imminent return is near in Jesus' name. And so I pray that this will gather, gather with would grab a hold of your attention, the way that he grabbed a hold of Moses' attention, that he will grab a hold of our generation. You'd be you're like, I'm, a, I'm part of the older generation. I'm part of the middle generation. I'm part of the younger generation. No, we are part of the now generation. Now is the time. Now is the time where the fathers look to the son and the sons look to the father. Now is the time where the older generation, as what they have been studying in the Bible, what they've been re reading on, and they, what they've been uh, grab, uh, grabbing hold of was shared to the next generation, was shared to, to our generation, and vice versa. Because we see something crazy that is happening. We see the birth pains. We see things that are happening. Does God grab, does God have your attention? But I pray as we cry out, we cry out Maranatha, as we cry out to the Lord, that God will, will <laughs> that God, I have, that God has my attention and I have God's attention. That's vice versa. God, here I am, Lord. Here I am. But I love the fact Moses, he's like, don't send me. <laughs> You have my attention, Lord, but don't send me. It's like, what, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, Lord, I, I stutter. Lord, I do that. Lord, I, what are the people going to say? They're going to think I'm a crazy man. As I was doing the morning devotion, as I've been doing the morning, morning devotional, I was thinking of that in the very beginning. I said, like, what do they think I'm crazy? Like, like, what is this brother talking about? What is he like? Preaching on, why is he so excited early in the morning at, at 5 or 30 in the morning, at dark o'clock in the morning? And they're like, what do the people think I'm crazy? I said, so be it. People, people, I already know everybody's crazy. <laughs> what, what I know is that there's a crazy thing that is happening. So I was like, let's share the word of God. Let's share God's word because we need to, we need to draw closer to the Lord. And I pray that that, that would that that will speak volumes to you guys. Because it spoke volumes to me. It's like, God, I want to know you and I want other people to know who you are. And to know him is to know that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. He's the God of all generations. As I was thinking about that, not knowing, not knowing I was going to be reading this, I was, uh, I was thinking about the God of Mami Rossi. You're like, who's Mami Rossi? Mami Rossi is my grandma. She's the one. She's the one that, that was been doing the one year Bible for over 30 years. Consistently, faithfully, she's been reading her one year Bible for over 30 years. From, from when I was born, I'm in my 30, they're on, I'm 34. So I've been since before I was born, because I think the one year Bible, the way that uh, the, the Bible reading plan, because obviously the Bible has been out for quite a, you know, it's been out. But for the one year Bible, the, the, the reading program, the reading uh, structure has been out for about over 30 years. And so she got her first one year Bible. And then so she's been reading it. And then so the Lord has been so faithful. The Lord has been faithful to her. Throughout her years, it reminds me of, of that song. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. Come on, somebody. And then, praise God, I don't sing. I'll leave that to my wife. And, and um, so she's been reading her one year Bible for over 30 years and getting to know God, getting to know him in a deeper way. And so I was, I was, I was thinking about that. I said, the God of Mami Rossi. 
The God of Mami Rossi is so faithful. The God of Mami Rossi is powerful. The God of Mami Rossi is alive. The God of Mami Rossi changes life. The God of Mami Rossi, he is he's wonderful because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. The prayers of my grandma has availeth much and seen answered prayers. Seen answered prayers for her life. And I was thinking about that. I said, the God of Mami Rossi. The God of our ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do people want to know your God? Do people want to know? I want to know the God of Mondo. I want to know the God of Rachel Meyer. I want to know the God of Israel. I want to know this God. I want to know the God of Bethel and Julie. I want to know him. Because in this portion of scripture, say this to the people, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God, this is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. The God of Sonia Inojos, my mom. The, Lord, the sustaining power that he has given her. Answering, hearing, and having her have that revelation, having her, having my mom know <clears throat> and, and experience what God is doing in this land. The God of my dad, in the name of Jesus, Armando Noho Sr., I want to know because that, that, that Lord, that, he's po so powerful, and I get to experience that. I get to know who my God is. And I want other people to know the God of the, of the scriptures, the God of the living, the God named Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's my goal in this, is that we would know him. That we would know him, we would we would encounter God, and that you would you and I would have a deeper relationship with the Lord. In Jesus' name, let's look at Matthew chapter seventeen. I know it's already two minutes. Actually, hold on. Let's go into Psalms twenty-two because this is powerful. I, I want to. Let's. Uh, I want you guys to read Matthew chapter twenty, uh, chapter seventeen, ten through twenty-seven, and just write what the Lord has put in your heart. And then, but let's get into Psalm 22 because we already have two minutes. Ah, check this out. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan? Every day I call to you, my God, but you don't answer. Every night I lift my voice, but I find no relief. Yet you are holy and thrown on the praises of your Israel. And so in this portion, we see the we see what's going on in the soul. We feel uh, God listening as God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And we see that, do we, are we having God's attention? And then it says, every day I call to you, but I feel no answer. Sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes we feel like we're empty and dry and feel like, oh Lord, are you hearing me? And every night I lift my voice, but no relief yet. Come on, let the spirit rise up in you. Yet you are holy enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. What, we, what did we just read in Exodus? That the God of our fa fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. They cried out to you and you saved them. They trusted in you and were never disgraced. But I'm a worm and not a man. I'm scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? And so now David is prophetically sharing the message of the Lord. Hundreds of years before it actually happened, uh, David was prophesying what was going on. They, they, they see me and they mock me. Jesus was on the cross and they saw him and they mocked at him. They sneer and shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. What is the thief? If, if you are the son of man, save yourself. 
And yet you brought me safely from my mother's womb. You led me to trust you at my mother's breast. And I was thrust into your arms at my birth. You have been my God from the moment I was born. Do not say, do not stay so far from me for, for trouble is near and no one else can help me. My enemies surround me like a herd of bulls. Fierce bulls at, ba at Bashan have hemmed me in. Like lions, they open their jaws against me, rowing and tearing into the prey. My life is poured out like water. Look at that. Verse 14. Here it goes even deeper. They were just like letting, them, letting us have it. Letting the, he's writing them down. My life is poured out like water, and all my, bo my bones are out of joints. Out of joints. My heart is like wax melting within me. My strength has dried up like a sun-baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. And then this portion, we know that he's talking about the Messiah. They have pierced my hands and feet. They have pierced my hands and my feet. They, the Israelites, the Israel people, didn't know about this gruesome crucifixion thing. It came from the came from the Romans, but hundreds of years before it actually happened, David was prophesying. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My enemies stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among themselves and throw dice for my clothing. In the Psalms. That's why, look at this. That's why, the, that's why Jesus said, you will know about me and in the, in the law of Moses and the, 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 the word of the prophets and in the Psalms. You will know who I am. I, I, they have spoken about me. And David is speaking about the Lord in the Psalms. This is before it actually happened. And David is prophesying. David is releasing that word. So powerful. <laughs> Look what the Lord has done. Go even deeper, guys. Go, go even deeper. Look, look at, look at this portion of scripture. Look at it. It's like, Lord, you, you said this before. You said this before in, in the Psalms. In the Psalms, how, how can this? How can this be? The Jewish people didn't know about this kind of execution. But look it. They have pierced my hands and my feet. It's like, it's like David was, was seeing himself in the, per, in the first person, but I'm pretty sure he was giving him a glimpse, a foreshadow of, the, of Jesus right here. Of what Jesus experienced. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Oh, it's already over six, uh, six, oh three, six three, six oh four now. But uh, you see what the Lord is doing. I want you guys to read. Actually, let's read Proverbs really quick. Let's read Proverbs. So now, my son, listen to me. Never stray away from what I have, I'm about to say. Stay away from her. Don't go near the door of her house. If you do so, you will lose your honor and will lose the merciless people all you have achieved. Strangers will come, will consume your wealth, and someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor. In the end, you will groan in anguish. When, when disease consumes your body, you will say, how I hated discipline. If only I had not ignored all the warnings. You hear that? If only I would not have ignored all the warnings. And God has given us warning, guys. If only I have not ignored all the warnings. I'm going to say that again. All why, oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay attention to my instructor, instructors? I have come to, to the brink of utter ruin, and now I must face public disgrace. May we pay attention, guys. May we pay attention to the teaching of the word. May we pay attention to the signs that are happening. May God grab our attention. Because in this portion... It says, why did I ignore these warnings? Why did I ignore the signs? And why did I ignore, why did I ignore them? And you see the, the regret 
And I pray that God will grab our attention. I pray that God, in what's happening, what's going on, that God will grab our attention. Maybe you don't know the Lord. Let me introduce you to him. His name is Jesus. He is he's a wonderful counselor. He's peace. He loves you. He is madly in love with you. It says in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Because we're living in dark times. We're living in scary times. But we are living in the most exciting times. Why? Because we know that Jesus return is imminent and we know that his holy spirit is here preparing the hearts of the people amen so let's pray our father in heaven holy is actually if you want to know him say lord i want to know you deeper lord it's in your own prayer i want to know who you are i want to know you i want to know the god of of mondo i want to know who the god of abraham isaac and jacob i want to know this I want to know, I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to have a relationship. I want to know I want to have a deeper relationship with him because the Lord is grabbing my attention. In Jesus name. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless your body, your labor, your emotions, spiritual and social. I know I went on a little longer, but we needed to hear this message, guys. Grab our attention, Lord. And I pray that we'll grab your attention. In Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See si Dios quiere. Bye. <laughs>